Welcome to the channel. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Now on today's video, we are going to be reviewing stones. Now these stones are not your usual stones that you find out on the road. These were carefully sourced by me digging through the clay in my garden. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm absolutely pulling your legs guys. So let's have a look at what we are reviewing today. So today I have a Pagani design. Now it seems like it has been absolutely forever since I have reviewed a Pagani design on my channel. Now the one thing I do love about Pagani, you always know what you're going to get regardless of the model. So with the boxes, they're all the same. Um, even though this is slightly changed, they, they don't use that flip lock style box anymore. This is just a cardboard one, but the branding, uh, you know, what you get, the contents, everything is always exactly the same. So the watch we're going to look at today is the Pagani Design 1667 or as you can probably tell this is the Seamaster No Time To Die uh, 007 homage. Now it's befitting because I just uh, reviewed the Heimdaller Seamaster homage and uh, so let's go ahead and have a look at the Pagani Design. Pagani are always very popular so with the unboxing, the contents, your usual manual warranty instructions form you know we've all seen these they sell these in the thousands so everybody is you know knows today what to expect so let's go ahead have a look at this pagani okay looks all right you know what it is? It's it's difficult to actually criticize Pagani's because they come in so so cheap, um, and halfway through you just think, what what's the point? You know, uh, and you know with the Pagani's again being very popular, the reason I have held off on reviewing Pagani's, uh, because of the new releases are picked up by so many people, so many reviewers out there. I feel I don't think I can actually add any more value to that to to the countless reviews out there already. So I just tend to leave them alone. But I have picked them up this year, uh, just to you know see if they have let's see if they have improved just to catch up with the brand see where they're going um but i do love their consistency good or bad you know you know what you are going to get and consistency is always better than being inconsistent so enough of that let's uh let's talk about the watch let's start getting into the review um wrist check today this is my 54 watch um yes it does have a rather naughty mod but I actually love how this one turned out. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite watches. As you can tell, uh, I'm expecting to get a few comments in that se comment section below. Awesome, awesome looking watch. So back to the Pagani, let's quickly uh, have an overview of the specifications. So you've got full 316L stainless steel construction, including the bezel, the crown, the case back, also the bracelet that's been supplied on. You've got a domed box style sapphire crystal with no air coating you've got a 90 click ceramic bezel insert and bezel unidirectional of course and you've got 100 meters of water resistance now this watch runs the seiko epson nh 35 movement which is of, as you know it's a 24 joule movement with hack and wind uh, functionality and a date complication Rated accuracy, if you're interested, is minus 20 to plus 40 seconds a day, although they run well, well within that tolerance, usually in and around the 10 seconds, plus or minus a day. So, you know, you can always tell why Pagani is going to be an awesome, awesome package. They give you the raw specifications. Uh, and if anything, they have been major disruptors uh, to the watch game in China because they give you these, let's, let's face it, you know, premium specifications at such a low, low price. So before we get into the price, let's cover the dimensions of the watch. We've got a 42 mil diameter case with a lug to lug of 49 millimeters. You've got a case thickness of 14 millimeters and a lug width of 20 mil. Now on the supplied strap, this watch comes in at around 125 grams, which isn't bad at all. Uh, and the pricing for these watches is anywhere between 90 to 110 pounds, depending on the combination you go for. Now, what combinations do they come in? Uh, you get this black dial, they call it the black option, which is basically this vintage style dial with this cream off-white colors. Um, you also get a white dial with a blue and red bezel, and you also get a black and orange version. Strap options, you can get this Milanese 
shark mesh style strap. Uh, it also actually comes with a fitted curved end silicon strap. Uh, and you also have the option of a mesh, uh, sorry, of a NATO. I think the NATO is added in on, on all of them, not too sure. I didn't actually buy this from AliExpress. I planned to, but I saw one pop up on eBay uh, going for a very good price. So I thought might as well save the time uh, and, you know, this can get into my hands much, much quicker. Let's take a closer look at the dial. Now you've got a pretty standard dial configuration. You've got a mixture of applied features and printed features. At the 12 o'clock, just below the dual button that you see, you've got Pagani design and the logo. At the six, just above it, you've got automatic, water resistant, 10 bar or 100 meters. And just on either side of that six o'clock indice, you've got Japan movement. You have a date window at three o'clock without a date frame, and you've got applied indices, a mixture of circular and baton, as mentioned, the dual baton at 12 o'clock, and batons at six and at nine. You also have a chapter ring present on the actual dial. Printing is pretty clear. Um, there's no misprints that you can see. The indices have been applied well. You do, you do have a polished frame around all the hour markers. And now the dial itself is not a flat texture. There is a very subtle texture to it and almost gives you this black shimmery effect. Now the hands used on this watch are pretty flat polished semi skeletonized sword style hands you can see the loom application at the ends of the minute and the hour hand got that lollipop and second hand all fully polished and to be honest i've not seen any blemishes or any dirt or grease on the actual handsets you know the application uh, is good there's no misalignment present uh, so overall the dial and the handset do match and you know they've been done to a pretty decent level all that is left is to check out the loom. We know Pagani have never been strong in the loom game. So let's just see if they've improved the loom on this watch. Now Pagani do say that this is C3 Super Luminova, which it obviously isn't. But I have said and what I have found with this vintage style loom, you know, you really can't expect too much. And this is as good as it usually gets. You know, you do get a slight difference. So for this to even be visible, I'll say it's okay. So I think let's give it a helping hand and let's see how it looks when you do hit it with that UV. Now I have to say I am pleasantly surprised with how bright this loom can actually get. The application is, you know, uh, clear. Um, it, there's no patchiness. It's been applied well and it covers all the indices. It's on the hour minute hand and it's on the second hand. The loom uh, on the pip, you could really can't see it, uh, is a lot duller. However, this is a very, very good attempt from Pagani. Of course, they have increased the cost in this watch, and it's good to see that maybe it has gone towards the loom somehow. Um, but really, with this vintage loom, you know, we really can't gauge the true output of the loom unless we see a normal dial. So credit where credit is due, a fairly decent job by Pagani on the loom. Now Pagani have gone with a box style or top hat style sapphire crystal and you can tell it's not just an oversized crystal because the edges are actually polished and they're slightly curved. So fair play to Pagani for doing that. Um, the crystal looks fantastic. It's got great legibility and the fact that it's sapphire is always a plus. The ceramic bezel used fits well. Um, you know, it's got good, decent printing. It's of course ceramic, which added scratch resistance. Doubled with that sapphire should mean that the Pagani stays uh, like it's never been touched so stay in good condition um you've got the markings traditional that of the omega c master it's doing well to pay homage to that watch and you've got this slightly raised pip at the 12 o'clock again with that loom application so while we're here let's transition into the case let's look at the case and the brushing so you've got circular brushing around the bezel and all across those little dimples that you see it has been done to a very high degree and you look at the sides of the case so on the top side of the case the air face as i call it uh, you've got polished highlights and you've got a polished crown now that transitions into a brushed linear brushed finish along the sides of the case and the brushing is done to a high level there's no uh, it doesn't look coarse you've got pretty fine brushing present and at the same time those highlights do really make the case stand out and that has been polished pretty well as well now when you flip the watch over you turn it around you can see the watch does use an exhibition case back so that allows you to see the nh35 which runs this movement uh, beating away and allows you to look at the watch a little bit closer uh, and then around the sides of that brush case back you can see the specifications which have been laser etched right then let's take a look at the bezel rotation so with this being a pagani um, i don't really expect it to be anything special and i'd like to see if they've improved in fact so let's go ahead all 
I'll tell you what, I am pleasantly surprised. Um, I do like the way the bezel is actually clicking. You can clearly make out the clicks. Now, as I mentioned, this is a 90 click bezel. Let's check for alignment. Alignment is, you know, it's, it's there, right? Um, playback. Oh, damn. So, over the click uh, playback. Now, this is what I said about Pagani. Um, got, yeah, negligible movement in the actual bezel. This is what I said, you know, they are consistent. You know, when you do buy a Pagani, you buy knowing that there's going to be uh, a bezel issue. Uh, you know, they're going to have loom issues. Other than that, I've not really come across any issues. That's why I said I always find it hard critiquing Pagani design um, and should you really, uh, depending on the price. Now, they have obviously put some more money into this watch. And, you know, I'd be happy with this bezel. Yeah, I mean, that back play, to be honest, who does it really bother? I know there are quite a few people that are quite pedantic and very particular in the bezel. Um, I mean, are you going to really take this diving? Well, you can't because it's 100 meters only. Um, so that little pay playback, sorry, yes, it exists, but do we expect anything more? Um, well, actually, it's rocking quite a bit, so it goes back a, back a click, and it goes forward about half a click. Um, but yeah, on that front, overall, I'm actually happy with the bezel. Let's see what this Pagani is like on the wrist. Let's put this, give you guys a little close-up before I put it away. So how do I put this on? So 42 millimeter case, um, 14 mil thick. My wrist is six and a half inches and the log to log of this watch is 49 millimeters. And I'd say for a six and a half inch wrist, that's absolutely fine. You can, you know, wear bigger watches. But yeah, it looks okay. So a good presence and, you know, visually it looks actually like a nice watch as well. So let's put this on a NATO or to be exact, the Bond NATO. So there we go. Um, I mean, yes, this NATO isn't exactly like that 007 style NATO that fits this watch, but you know, it's kind of close. Um, you know, the NATOs, don't get me wrong, they are comfortable. Uh, they fit well, but I just, I'm just not a fan of at all. Um, you know, I don't like this bit and I know you can put them on a different way to remove that, but then that just feels overly flimsy. So straps, um, there is a general sort of consensus. Um, I would have liked to try the bracelet. The bracelet looks quite decent and i think overall people do think they are quite decent i think the only thing is that uh they prefer and a lot of people prefer the actual fitted silicon um strap that is provided with one of these so you'll find a lot of people do actually go for them over the natos uh, and even if they have the bracelet they change it for that uh, so you know good on pagani providing different strap options uh, when it comes to strap they are quite a, a major part of you know watch enthusiasts and you know wearing a watch a strap can make or break a watch on certain occasions so we've tested out the pagani design what's my overview what's my thoughts on this particular watch well let's just give you some stats pagani sell loads and loads of these now i did a poll recently about you know the best and worst qc uh, and i put pagani in there and pagani actually had the highest number of votes i think it was disproportionate i think over 60 percent 70 percent so I get a poll that tells me that, but then you look at the numbers that they sell in. Now this one in particular, just looking on AliExpress, doing a basic, basic search, it tells you they've sold just shy of 2000 orders amongst different stores. That's a lot of watches. Uh, and when you do a search on AliExpress again by orders, you find Pagani beat everybody in sales. Now, especially that Submariner model of theirs, they're upwards of six and a half thousand pieces sold. Um, and they are the top, top performing, um, you know, brand on AliExpress. So people buy them and yet they know that they're going to have these poor QC issues. Uh, and to be honest with you, like I said, it always comes back down to consistency. I've looked at three or four, I think 
Pagani's in my time and for me that's been enough to tell me where they will stand uh, I'd say to date the best Pagani for me is that they just homage uh, primarily because there was no bezel and you know generally the case finish and the bracelet finish was pretty good pretty decent especially for the price uh, so with this Pagani design they do these are costing you a bit more like I said between 90 to 110 um, is it worth it have they done enough to improve it from that 60 to 70 pound mark um, slightly on the loom and I say that with some reservations because I haven't seen the normal loom I've only seen this vintage loom and I'm okay with that I do like the sound and the way the bezel moves you know it's it's okay even though there is quite a bit of back play uh, and in terms of the case finish I've got no issues with it there is no sharpness present I would have liked to see the bracelet which is why you pay that 110 just to give you a better overview um, but right now I don't see anything wrong with it at all there is a slight uh, input from me on the design side I feel that the buttons on the dial they at the six uh, and the nine are just a little bit too thin and even that dual baton it looks slightly disproportionate uh, you've got these rather uh, rather large circular indices but you know they just need to thicken these up a bit just to make it look a bit better but overall like the dial finish is pretty good everything's okay um yeah everything is okay now when it comes to homogenous now you can see this is pretty different to what's out there the beleaguers the fly leaders and the heimdall that I looked at you know it's missing that helium escape valve now I don't know, uh, you could look at this two ways. You could either look at it that Pagani hasn't done a very good job homaging the Omega Seamaster, uh, you know, because after all, this is what it's trying to look like, the No Time to Die. Uh, it's advertised as that and everyone knows it as that uh, and just call it a poor homage. Or you could look at it differently. I mean, to be honest, most of those helium release escape valves are useless. Yeah, they're just duds. Um, you know, they do function, they might screw in and out, but I don't know if they are a one-way valve system. Um, but I think they just thought, you know, what, it'd be pointless to put it on because it doesn't really work. Um, and then, you know, you've only got 100 meters of water resistance on here. So maybe they went, that was their thinking behind it. And to make uh, a watch more like what a Hamad should be, you know, not exactly the same. It's just sh sharing similarities. So depends how you look at it. Uh, and I think you could look at it both ways because Pagani don't hold back when it came to a Submariner. Uh, they tried their best to make it look like, you know, what they were homaging. So that's my overview on this uh, watch. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. No doubt a lot of you do have this model and let me know how you're getting on with it. Uh, and if you had have, if you have had, sorry, different models, let me know which one I should get. Uh, and hopefully I'll try and do some three-way, four-way comparison if need be. So as always, thank you everybody for watching and I will see you on the next video. Thank you.